Well, this robustness against making mistakes uh, is all around us in a series of um, encodings that are known as check digit codes. And the idea of these, you see them on all sorts of cards and uh, tickets and so forth. You'll have many of them in your pocket at the moment. By the end of the lecture, you'll be aghast at uh, uh, what you're carrying around with you. So the idea is, first of all, to guard against simple transcription errors. So if the person on the other end of the phone, uh, in Timbuktu, uh, who's dealing with your bank account, you know, when you, when you ring up, um, uh, and doesn't seem to really in the line, is rather crackly, you don't really speak much English, um, uh, uh, you want to have some protection against them just uh, writing down the wrong amount. So when you say, you know, this is my account number, uh, what insurance do you have that they won't make a, a transcription error? Uh, there are certain sorts of fraud, uh, which is rather naive. Suppose at home that you had a, uh, a bank note printing system, you know, color Xerox machine or something. You're just, you're just running off thousands of bank notes, and you've thought, you know, with Photoshop, you'll just add in some serial numbers, okay? Well, uh, not any old number of the right number of digits is a valid serial number for a banknote. So there's an inter internal check digit code which will be used to validate some of those numbers. So passports, credit cards, and so forth, uh, what we're worried about are these sorts of typing errors. You know, just maybe making one digit mistake or adding an extra number uh, or flipping them around and so forth. Can you devise a system which is uh, efficient enough to recognize almost all of those sorts of errors uh, and stop the transaction going any further? So here's a simple worked example to begin with. This is an old-fashioned airline ticket. So these are very hard to come by. Um, and I suspect if you show it to people, then Ryanair charge you an extra 50 quid or something <laughs> like that. Um, <coughs> So here's the ticket number sitting down here. Uh, this is what it is. I've written it out up here. So you see a number here, 485-191-3640. And there's a check digit system uh, in operation here. There's another little digit just beyond it, which is a 3. So if you divide that ticket number by 7, it doesn't go exactly uh, because you end up with... Uh, 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 10 at the end, and there's a remainder of 3. Okay, So the check digit is the remainder after you divide the ticket number by 7. Okay, So that's why the 3 appears there. So if somebody was to uh, write this down incorrectly uh, and flip the 3 and the 1 around, when it was divided by 7, the remainder would not be equal to the check digit there, in this case 3, and the number would be invalid. So there's a simple internal consistency check that this is a valid ticket number. Well, this type of structure uh, is developed in all sorts of different ways for different types of devices to guard against typical transcription errors. And you probably remember the Victor Meldrew story where a simple transposition uh, created such a disaster for him that instead of ordering one item of catalogue uh, object number 250, the garden gnome, he ended up ordering 250 items, sorry, of, of uh, some other object. He ordered 250 uh, items of catalogue object number one, which was the garden gnome. So he ended up with an awful lot of garden gnomes. And uh, research that people do uh, on documents shows that these are the most common type of errors that you make. The, the first of just replacing one number or one letter by a different letter nearly 80% of the time. These inversions, uh, instead of writing two letters, you write the inversions, about 10%. Uh, doing it with three is about 1% of the time. Uh, errors with repeated doubles uh, or letters and numbers, these are all about a fraction of a percent. So you can see that in practice, we're rather prone to making these sorts of errors. Um, uh, some of these are just spelling errors, spelling receivers with IE instead of EI, you can see. 